the analysis of microeconomic theory has two approaches partial equilibrium and general equilibrium approach. The first approach is based on the analysis of a particular sector or part say equilibrium in the rice market or a particular input market etc of the economy in isolation. When we study the behavior of individual decision making units and the working of individual markets for commodities and inputs under various market structures, it is a case of partial equilibrium analysis. It can be said that the partial equilibrium approach deals with each market independently without considering the effects of changes of other markets on the concerned market. The advantage of this is that it permits the analyst to focus upon one thing at a time and thus allays the confusion that can arise if all the things are considered together. The partial equilibrium analysis does not examine how the various individual pieces fit together to form an integrated economic system. This task is left to general equilibrium analysis. The general equilibrium analysis recognizes the fact of interdependence among different economic units. Interdependence in the economy make partial equilibrium analysis overly simple because demand and supply in one market depend on prices determined in other markets. General equilibrium analysis broadens the perspective taking into account the interactions and interdependencies within the various parts of the economy and seeks to analyze the determination of equilibrium in this situation. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the analysis of microeconomic theory, learn about the two approaches adopted for the analysis, also learn about the purpose and use of these approaches in detail. The analysis of microeconomic theory has two approaches, partial equilibrium and general equilibrium approach. In microeconomic analysis, we study the market for a particular commodity or a particular factor input. The price of a commodity is determined when the demand for that commodity is equal to its supply. The wage rate is determined when the demand for labor is equal to its supply. The interest rate is determined when the demand for savings is equal to its supply. In all these markets, the equilibrium is attained at the point where the demand and supply are equal and no one has the incentive to upset the position. This kind of analysis is called partial equilibrium analysis. It focuses on determination of equilibrium prices and quantities in a market independent of effect from other markets. In analyzing what is going on in one market, we ignore what is going on in other markets. Uh, the basic characteristic of a partial equilibrium approach is the determination of the price and quantity in a commodity market or in a factor input market by demand and supply curves. In the words of Professor Stigler, a partial equilibrium is one which is based on only a restricted range of data. A standard example is price of a single product, the price of all other products being held fixed during the analysis. Thus, the first approach is based on the analysis of a particular sector or part, say equilibrium in the rice market or a particular input market etc. of the economy in isolation. When we study the behavior of individual 
decision making units and the working of individual markets for commodities and inputs under various market structures it is a case of partial equilibrium analysis it can be said that the partial equilibrium approach deals with each market independently without considering the effects of changes of other markets on the concerned market the advantage of this is that it permits the analyst to focus upon one thing at a time and thus allays the confusion that can arise if all the things are considered together the partial equilibrium analysis does not examine how the various individual pieces fit together to form an integrated economic system this task is left to general equilibrium analysis it is an extensive study of a number of economic variables their interrelation and interdependence for analyzing the working of the economic system as a whole the essential feature of an economy can be summed up in the phrase everything depends on everything else in other words the fundamental feature of any economic system is the interdependence among its constituent parts the markets of the commodities and all productive factors are interrelated and the prices in all markets are simultaneously determined for example consumers demand for various goods and services depends on their tastes and incomes consumers incomes in turn depend on the demand and supply of the various inputs the demand for fact inputs by firms uh, depends not only on the state of technology but also on the demand for the final goods they produce the demand for these goods depends on consumers incomes which depend on the demand for the factors of production thus change in one market affects other markets which in turn affects the original market the disturbance in one market permeates the entire economy and the general equilibrium analysis concerns itself with the changes caused in the whole economy general equilibrium analysis seeks to determine the equilibrium in an economy recognizing the fact of interconnections and interdependence among the different products and factor markets here any change in one market affects other markets like spillover effect and is affected by other markets namely the feedback effects professor stigler has aptly remarked that the theory of general equilibrium is the theory of interrelationship among all parts of the economy take any economy interdependence among its constituent parts is a fundamental feature thus interrelationship among markets are taken explicitly into account in other words it explicitly takes into account the spillover effects and feedback effects while determining the prices and quantities in all the markets simultaneously spillover effect is a price or quantity adjustment in one market caused by price and quantity adjustment in other related markets if the equilibrium in one sector is disturbed by a policy or due to some event then when this sector tries to achieve its new equilibrium position it disturbs the equilibrium in all the other or interrelated sectors and these sectors in turn derive a new equilibrium an example a change in the demand and price of new domestically produced automobiles will immediately 
affect the demand and price of the inputs of automobiles such as steel, glass and rubber as well as demand wages and income of auto workers. The demand and price of gasoline and of public transportation as well as wages and income of workers in these industries are also affected. These affected industries have spillover effects on still other industries until the entire economic system is more or less developed and all prices and quantities are affected. This is like throwing a rock in a pond and examining the ripples emanating in every direction until the stability of the entire pond is affected. The size of the ripples declines as they move farther and farther away from the point of impact. Similarly, industries further removed or less related to the automobile industry are less affected than more closely related industries. The effects that a change in the automobile industry has on the rest of the economy will have repercussions through changes in relative prices and incomes on the automobile industry itself. These effects are called feedback effects which are likely to significantly modify the original partial equilibrium conclusions relating to price and output reached by analyzing the automobile industry in isolation. The general equilibrium analysis recognizes the fact of interdependence among different economic units. Interdependence in the economy make partial equilibrium analysis over simple because demand and supply in one market depend on prices determined in other markets. General equilibrium analysis broadens the perspective taking into account the interactions and interdependencies within the various parts of the economy and seeks to analyze the determination of equilibrium in this situation. Now we'll discuss different characteristics of partial equilibrium approach. In microeconomic analysis, we study the market for a particular commodity or a particular factor input. The price of a commodity is determined when the demand for the commodity is equal to its supply. The wage rate is determined when the demand for labor is equal to its supply. The interest rate is determined when the demand for savings is equal to its supply. In all these markets, the equilibrium is attained at the point where the demand and supply are equal and no one has the incentive to upset the position. This kind of analysis is called partial equilibrium analysis. It focuses on determination of equilibrium prices and quantities in the market independent of effect from other markets. In analyzing what is going on in one market, we ignore what is going on in other markets. Such an equilibrium is called partial, that is the equilibrium price of a single commodity or a single factor input is derived under the assumption that all other commodity prices or factor input prices in the economy are fixed. The basic characteristic of a partial equilibrium approach 
is the determination of the price and quantity in a commodity market or in a factor input market by demand and supply curves. In the words of Professor Stigler, a partial equilibrium is one which is based on only a restricted range of data. A standard example is price of a single product, the prices of all other product being held fixed during the analysis. Now we will discuss the behavior of individuals under partial equilibrium. In partial equilibrium analysis, we consider the behavior of individual decision-making units and individual markets viewed in isolation. It examines how an individual maximizes his satisfaction subject to his income constraint. How a firm minimizes its cost of production how a firm maximizes profits under various market conditions, how the prices and employment of each type of input is determined. No interconnections. The partial equilibrium analysis does not take into account the interconnections that exist between an individual economic unit and the rest of the economy. These interconnections are taken care of under the generic exemption of Cetris Paribus. In other words, in partial equilibrium analysis, we study utility or profit maximizing behavior and decisions in each segment of the economy as if they were independent of the other segments of the economy. For example, when we study the behavior of households in their role as consumers who allocate their income among various goods and services so as to maximize their utility subject to their income constraint, we conveniently assume that the income are given. Income of the consumers depend upon the magnitude of factor services demanded and supplied in the factor market. Under the assumption of Cetris Paribus, we conveniently avoid this interconnection. Thus, we are able to isolate the study of consumer behavior from other parts of the economy. Likewise, when we study the cost minimizing behavior of a business firm, we limit ourselves to the given prices of inputs and the known state of technology. We consider the production decisions in isolation and ignore the influence of such factors as the demand for the product and related goods, which are in turn influenced by employment, income and taste of consumers. Similarly, when we study the profit maximizing behavior of a business firm, we limit ourselves to one product market and the study of each market rests on the Cetris Paribus assumptions. Relationships with other markets are ignored. In short, Partial equilibrium analysis studies the behavior of individual economic segments 
in isolation and ignores their interdependence now we will discuss the use of partial equilibrium analysis partial equilibrium analysis is helpful for two types of problems first is when we are interested in analyzing economic changes in any particular industry for example effect of labor strike in steel industry each market in partial equilibrium analysis is regarded independent of the other second is to assess initial effects of government policies excise or custom duty on some particular product partial equilibrium analysis studies these initial effects for example impact of a labor strike in the steel industry would first be felt upon steel production this can be termed as first order impacts later on there will be spill over effects on the entire economy this is termed as the second and higher order impacts the second and higher order impacts would be felt in the next immediate steel using industry and finally in the whole economy the partial equilibrium analysis is basically concerned with measuring the first order impacts only as opposed to general equilibrium analysis which attempts to measure second and higher order impacts of a change now let us study about the general equilibrium analysis it is an extensive study of a number of economic variables their interrelation and interdependence for analyzing the working of economic system as a whole the essential feature of an economy can be summed up in the phrase everything depends on everything else in other words the fundamental feature of any economic system is the interdependence among its constituent parts the markets of the commodities and all productive factors are interrelated and the prices in all markets are simultaneously determined for example consumers demand for various goods and services depend on their taste and incomes consumers income in turn depend on the demand and supply of various inputs the demand for factor inputs by firm depends not only on the state of technology but also on the demand for the final goods they produce the demand for these goods depends on consumers income which depend on the demand for the factors of production thus change in one market affects other markets which in turn affects the original market the disturbance in one market permeates the entire economy and the general equilibrium analysis concerns itself with the changes caused 
in the whole economy. General equilibrium analysis seeks to determine the equilibrium in an economy. Recognizing the fact of interconnections and interdependence among the different products and factor markets. Here, any change in one market affect other markets known as spillover effect and is affected by other markets. This effect is known as feedback effects. Professor Stigler has aptly remarked that the theory of general equilibrium is the theory of interrelationship among all parts of the economy. Take any economy, interdependence among its constituent parts is a fundamental feature. Thus, interrelationship among markets are taken explicitly into account. In other words, general equilibrium analysis explicitly takes into account the spillover effects and feedback effects while determining the prices and quantities in all markets simultaneously. Spillover effect is a price or quantity adjustment in one market caused by price and quantity adjustment in other related markets. If the equilibrium in one sector is disturbed by a policy or due to some event, then when this sector tries to achieve its new equilibrium position, it disturbs the equilibrium in all the other or interrelated sectors and these sectors in turn derive a new equilibrium. Let us look at an example of spillover effect. A change in the demand and price of new domestically produced automobiles will immediately affect the demand and price of the inputs of automobiles such as steel as well as demand, wages and income of auto workers. The demand and price of gasoline and of public transportation as well as wages and income of workers in these industries are also affected. These affected industries have spillover effects on still other industries. Until the entire economic system is more or less developed and all prices and quantities are affected. Thus in simple words spillover effect is like throwing a rock in a pond and examining the ripples emanating in every direction until the stability of the entire pond is affected. The size of the ripples declines as they move farther and farther away from the point of impact. Similarly, industries further removed or less related to the automobile industry are less affected than more closely related industries. The effects that a change in the automobile industry has on the rest of the economy will have repercussions 
through changes in relative prices and incomes on the automobile industry itself. These effects are called feedback effects which are likely to significantly modify the original partial equilibrium conclusions price and output reached by analyzing the automobile industry in isolation general equilibrium analysis has two basic purposes a it provides a means of examining and analyzing the economic system as a whole b it provides a systematic approach to study after effects second or higher order effects of an economic change general equilibrium is therefore defined as a state in which all markets and all decision making units are simultaneous equilibrium any economy is said to be in the state of general equilibrium if there prevails a set of prices that can equate demand and supply and produce equilibria in every product and factor market that are mutually consistent now having understood both partial and general equilibrium analysis we can compare both of them partial equilibrium analysis studies the behavior of individual decision making units and individual markets viewed in isolation a general equilibrium exists when all markets in an economy are in simultaneous equilibrium the advantage of partial equilibrium is that permits the analyst to focus upon one thing at the time and thus allays the confusion that can arise if all the things are considered together the advantage of general equilibrium analysis is that it analyzes the economic system as a whole the partial equilibrium analysis does not take into account the interconnections that exist between an individual economic unit and the rest of the economy these interconnections are taken care of under the generic assumptions of certain parabis general equilibrium analysis seeks to determine the equilibrium of an economy by analyzing the behavior of all interconnected and interdependent economic units and segments in other words in partial equilibrium analysis we study utility or profit maximizing behavior and decisions in each segment 
of the economy as if they were independent of the other segments of the economy however general equilibrium analysis is concerned with the determination of equilibrium in all markets simultaneously let us now summarize what you have learned in this module partial equilibrium analysis studies the behavior of individual decision making units and individual markets viewed in isolation for example producers maximize profit subject to their production technology and resource constraints likewise consumers maximize utility subject to their taste and budget constraints similarly changes in a single market are examined in isolation from other markets this approach to economic analysis is called the partial equilibrium analysis the advantage of this is that it permits the analyst to focus upon one thing at a time and thus allays the confusion that can arise if all the things are considered together the partial equilibrium analysis does not take into account the interconnections that exist between an individual economic unit and the rest of the economy these interconnections are taken care of under the generic assumption of satris paribus in other words in partial equilibrium analysis we study utility or profit maximizing behavior and decisions in each segment of the economy as if they were independent of the other segments of the economy uh, a general equilibrium exists when all markets in in an economy are in simultaneous equilibrium it seeks to determine the equilibrium of an economy by analyzing the behavior of all interconnected and interdependent economic units and segments therefore general equilibrium analysis is concerned with the determination of equilibrium in all markets simultaneously